Small zeta reticuli grays and the release of the Cooper material. I'm reading from thewatcherfiles.com. The release of the Cooper material. There are many hazards regarding the exposing of information regarding UFOs. It has not been until quite recently that any degree of safety at all has been available for people releasing such information. Were it not for the fact that Cooper released his information so far and wide and it filtered to so many people at once, newspapers, legislators, heads of state, people in important positions all over the world, he would have suffered severely. But because it was scattered so quickly, it would have been fruitless to silence him after the information had been released. It would only have added to the credibility of the information. At the beginning of 1990, there was still an active debate in certain circles about what to do about Cooper, whether to deal with him in a threatening manner or simply discredit him. A campaign planned to use approximately $1 million worth of effort to discredit him. The money was to be used to imply that Cooper made up or gathered information from various sources and threw it together for a personal financial move. It was not to come through normal media channels, but through UFO magazines and newsletters in the form of articles and exposés, and through UFO groups, most of which are controlled. Alternate UFO scenarios were also to be released, so that by the time 1990 ended, many different scenarios would be floating around. People would be unable to decipher which one was true and which one wasn't. As long as interest was shown in the Cooper material by only a small group of people who happened to be curious about UFOs, there was to be no action taken. But if Cooper's material was taken seriously by credible people, these would be the target for the efforts to discredit him. Enormous amounts of previously highly classified information had been brought out into the open. We now have a situation where individuals, instead of being forced to remain silent for fear of assassination, are not afraid to tell what they know. Too many have seen, too many have witnessed, they cannot all be silenced. This is the beginning of the end of security surrounding this situation. Therefore, the following information shall be released. The species classified. The present number of alien types having contact with Earth right now is nine, with seven being relatively permanent and five being influential. Contrary to the information that government might release, not all UFO inhabitants are friendly representatives from the Galactic Space Federation. Zeta Reticuli Grays Small Zeta Reticuli Grays come from Zeta Reticulum, near Barnard Star, which is a neighboring star system to the Orion. They are very short, about 3.5 to 4 feet tall. Grayish silver in color, and have no sexual or digestive parts to their bodies. They are created through a cloning process of alien genetic engineering. They are an ancient race and have reproduced themselves for thousands of years. They have very limited facial features. They have large eyes, a very small slit for a mouth, and no nose to speak of. The eyes are large, almond-shaped, and black. They have evolved beyond the sexual reproduction process so that all sexual organs and their digestive tracts have totally atrophied. They are no longer capable of eating or indulging in sexual activities. They are a close relative to the insect family. The Zetas are the ones involved in the cattle mutilations. They absorb certain substances from parts of the cattle that stabilize them during the cloning process. This can be placed under the tongue to give sustenance and stability for some time. It is a substance that comes from certain mucous membranes, the lips, nose, genitals, and rectum, and also from certain organs. These glandular substances serve as nutrients in lieu of eating. Resting the substances under the tongue is not the only way to get nutrition. You may have noticed that the cattle mutilations generally result in all the blood being drained from the body. The Zetas have in their bases canisters and vats in which animals and human organs float along with a purple liquid to hold these parts in suspension. The Zetas swim in the mixture and absorb the nutrients through their skin. They use hydrogen peroxide in both the absorption and elimination process. The hydrogen peroxide also helps to preserve the liquid and organ mixture to keep it from spoiling. They have no digestive tract and they eliminate through the skin. To eliminate, they need to pass the substance through some part of their body, much the same way plants eliminate through their skin or outer shells. They use hydrogen peroxide for helping with that elimination as well. The Zetas have also been referred to as the little green men because they tend to turn a shade of green 
when they have not received sufficient food. When they are in this state, they are very vicious. The cloning of these aliens can be done quite quickly, reproducing synthetic replicas. They have a technology that is much beyond that of humans, and that has led to the agreements with the United States government whereby exchanges of these techniques could occur. The Zeta Reticuli Greys are not masters of their own fate. They are, rather, subservient to a reptilian race of people from their home planet. The Zetas seek but are fearful of freedom from their masters. They seem to have some desire to work closely with humans in an effort to retain the freedom that they have on Earth, which they have never experienced before. In their desire to retain that freedom from their reptilian masters, they would hope to play a role of being masters here on Earth, or at least having enough control so as to be safe from slavery by any other species. The Zetas are of two social classes, one being hawkish, the other more dove-like. The more dove-like Zetas are more refined and capable of more business-like behavior towards humans, while the other type is more abrupt, blunt, and crude in their directness. The Zetas desire the help of humans in an expected future confrontation with the reptilian masters, who are expected to follow soon within the next 20 years. This refers to the so-called asteroid that is on its way toward Earth. It is housing approximately 30 million reptilian aliens. It has, however, temporarily diverted its path as it moves into the constellation of Draco. Bell attracts greys. Short. The short gray, which is shorter than the Zeta Reticuli, is from a star system near the Orion constellation, near the shoulder of the figure, in a star called Bellatrax. The short gray, which is shorter than the Zeta Reticuli, is from a star system near the Orion constellation, near the shoulder of the figure in a star system called Bellatrax. They are shorter, much like dwarfs, about one and a half feet tall. They are more indirect, but just as vicious towards humans as the Zetas. Both the Bellatrax greys and the Zeta Reticuli greys are related genetically from the same root race and look very much alike except for size. Orion greys, tall. The other type of gray is the tall big nose gray. They have large noses and stand about seven or eight feet tall. They are based in the Aleutian Islands and recently were witnessed in a park in the eastern part of Russia. These creatures are hostile but less vicious towards humans. They tend to try to influence through the use of political controls. They have certain powers and technologies that allow them to perform actions that appear miraculous. In the Russian incident, a woman whose leg was deformed was picked up by these Orion Greys and was released thousands of miles away. Her leg was healed. The aliens did not heal her leg. They transplanted a new leg onto her body. The Orion Greys give the impression that they are benevolent towards humans, but they are heavily into genetic engineering. They use humans as guinea pigs to conduct various experiments. They have grown arms and legs and other body parts in a formless matrix made from human flesh. A leg may grow out of a torso. Hands might grow from the middle of the torso's stomach. All this is done through injecting of certain genomes into the flesh and the application of electromagnetic charges. In this way, they can grow human body parts to help deformed or injured humans or for their own purposes of food and sustenance. They are interested in controlling the masses of Earth through certain negotiated agreements with those in power. All greys. The greys are all to some degree influencing human history at this time. The nature of the greys, especially the Zeta Reticuli and the short greys, is that they do not have deep emotional feelings or compassion. They are very calculating, cold intellectuals, and see humans as being inferior. They look at humans much the same way a farmer looks at his cows. They understand the passions and compassions of humans to the degree it is observable by them, but they do not have feelings. These aliens are on the equivalent human level of cannibals. They see humans being an inferior species. They are carnivorous. The Zeta Reticuli greys feed upon glandular secretions of humans and are quite capable of killing people for that secretion, or abducting humans and extracting the secretions for themselves. The genetic manipulation is one way that aliens see as evolving and saving their dying race. In a sense, humans are suddenly the saviors of the souls of the aliens, but at least it is a way that humans may have an influence on the aliens. This is not the first time that a civilization has attempted to absorb an enemy rather than defeating it. While the enemy invader 
may assume that they are taking over, they are in fact being absorbed. The Tartars invaded Russia and within a hundred years were absorbed into Russian society. Pleiadians. Of the five, those from the Pleiades are entities who are distant relatives of humankind. They are related to and are the forefather race of the genetic creation of humankind. They are of a higher spiritual development than most people on Earth at this time. They have a kinship towards humans and are essentially the only aliens who can be trusted by humans. They have blonde hair and fair skin. They are allied with the Intergalactic Space Confederation. That doesn't mean that all entities of human appearance, spacecraft, can or should be trusted. For there are humans from this planet, from various governments who are working for the Zeta Reticuli Greys. Some from the Pleiades are subordinates to the Greys, having been abducted as children or offspring of the abductees. They have been raised and trained by the Greys as servants. The humans from the Pleiades have made several Earth contacts, but in recent times have suspended visitations to Earth. The government was told that this was because of a space law that states that the destiny of a people shall not be interfered with unless it threatens themselves or others in the galaxy. If the threat of nuclear war became strong enough, these entities indicated that they might interfere, but only to the degree of reducing that threat. That could also set up a conflict between the Pleiadians and the Zeta Greys, to whom a limited nuclear war is seen as beneficial. Since the humans have made an agreement and a pact with the Zeta Greys, even though there were warnings by the Pleiadians against this, there is now a hands-off policy. The Pleiadians feel that the humans have made their bed and now they must lie in it. It is not likely that humans will be rescued from the planned events simply to make things easier for humans to overcome the masters they have agreed to work with. Draco Mothman. In the constellation of Draco, there is another race of entities which has in the past visited Earth. They are eight foot tall, dark nocturnal aliens who appeared around graveyards and parks. They have red eyes that glow in the dark and wings to fly. They are referred to by us as Mothmen. They are also the source of legends of the past relating to gargoyles and Valkyries. Even some quantities of vampires have been taken from the qualities of this creature, the ability to fly and nocturnal habits. The Mothmen have no particular influence on Earth at this time other than as causing panic and a cause for curiosity. They are mostly hidden underground and do not wish to attract attention. Small Zeta Reticuli Grays and the Release of the Cooper Material I'm reading from thewatcherfiles.com The Release of the Cooper Material There are many hazards regarding the exposing of information regarding UFOs. It has not been until quite recently that any degree of safety at all has been available for people releasing such information. Were it not for the fact that Cooper released his information so far and wide and it filtered to so many people at once, Newspapers, legislators, heads of state, people in important positions all over the world, he would have suffered severely. But because it was scattered so quickly, it would have been fruitless to silence him after the information had been released. It would only have added to the credibility of the information. At the beginning of 1990, there was still an active debate in certain circles about what to do about Cooper, whether to deal with him in a threatening manner or simply discredit him. A campaign planned to use approximately $1 million worth of effort to discredit him. The money was to be used to imply that Cooper made up or gathered information from various sources and threw it together for a personal financial move. It was not to come through normal media channels, but through UFO magazines and newsletters in the form of articles and exposés, and through UFO groups, most of which are controlled. Alternate UFO scenarios were also to be released, so that by the time 1990 ended, many different scenarios would be floating around. People would be unable to decipher which one was true and which one wasn't. As long as interest was shown in the Cooper material by only a small group of people who happened to be curious about UFOs, there was to be no action taken. But if Cooper's material was taken seriously by credible people, 